big change in the sound from pushing the tides to tear drinker. New Mastodon, huh? It not that I'm not complaining, but I do get that feeling like when uh Cracked Sky came out and I kind of just like yeah, nah, not for me. Goodbye, Mastodon. See you whenever uh fucking uh Sultan of uh Sultan of the Curse comes Sultan out. Sultan of Sand, yeah. Yeah, there. And it's like I'm I'm kind of getting that similar vibe, but I like Mastodon more now than I did then. Right. So I, I'm willing to be like, yeah, they're not all going to be complete winners to me. I was in a weird spot. The uh, the weird thing to me was the baseline Mastodon is cracked the sky. <laughs> mm. Yeah. It, it's, I guess it's what you could judge all the other albums off of. As far as like. Wh- I, I tend to do that. That's kind of my measuring stick. It's yeah. Like, well, where's this rank, you know, compared to say crack the sky. Yeah. And I mean, more times than not. I mean, shit, my top three god emperor sand would probably be up there somewhere emperor sand yeah uh fucking uh blood mountain cold dark place right cold dark place probably my favorite and yeah. it's the least mastodony album there is it's all the blues fucking depression aspects of that band on one ep yeah except toe to toes toe to toes kind of kind of toe tapping no pun intended yeah, I, I don't know, man. Crack the sky. It's like, all right, this is Mastodon. Everything else that they put out, this is what I am going to go ahead and put everything up against. Man, that new track that dropped last night. I'm not. I'm not overly. Was yeah. tear drinker. I'm not. I'm not overly on board with it. It sounds. It's. I don't want to say this sounds like Mastodon got lazy, but it sounds like like all right, let's just mail it in with our normal set, sa- which their normal sound, by the way blows away most other acts. Oh, sure. As long as you're not comparing them like to other prog I mean, acts. Really pushing good. the Tides, got, I'm like, I'm ready. That song alone, I'm like, I will listen to that fucking album. Because that it's good, it's fast, it's brutal, it's got the harmonies, it's got fucking three quarters of that band singing, pretty much like always. And I got a feeling that's going to be like an opener, an album opener. Yeah. So I'd be all right with that. Bad yeah, drop last night. You can check it out. They've got it up on YouTube. Um and the reason I was up so late last night to hear it drop because they, uh, you know, they everything always drops at ten o'clock Mountain Time on a Thursday. That's right. That's because my ass got to uh, basically take the day off and just play golf and get paid for it today. So that's not a not, a, not bad. That's not a bad. Life hit. can be pretty cool sometimes, right? Yeah, it's uh, when you're uh, when you're throwing down some beers for breakfast or whatever. That's uh, that's going to be a day. Day drinking, it's a blessing and a burden. I don't think I'm as uh, I don't think I'm as in tune with it as I used to be, because at some point I'm going to start tapping out because I'm going to be fucking tired. Then you get that mid afternoon nap in, and then you wake up <laughs> after having powered through a bunch of beers, and you wake up with a hangover. I'm like, oh, right in the middle of your day. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the that's the shitty thing. You just have to keep going. It's like hangovers are for mornings, not not afternoons, not evenings. Because <laughs> then you just feel like you're sick. Like, man, this ain't right. Yeah. Clearly, I caught something. Right. Now you caught about a dozen beers in your belly before four o'clock. Ain't but, a bad uh, way to live. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a day. I actually, I hadn't played golf in like two years. There were a couple, there were a couple holes, man. I crushed it. No shit. Oh, yeah. I was out driving a couple people on occasion, and I'm not that guy. I'm a guy, I poop it out there about 100 yards at best. There were a couple of times today I got a hold of about a fucking 200-yard drive. Son of a bitch. Yeah. How does that feel when you do that? It, it, it kind of, well, like, you know what an orgasm feels like, right? <laughs> hold on. It's very similar it's, to uh, that. It's that. It's been a while. It's that, uh, yeah, it, it, it does. When everything like, connects right and it sounds right and you fucking your swing was right and you look up and the fucking thing's not going way right or way left it's gone fucking it's still going up yeah it's like oh god damn well and i was playing you know in our foursome we had uh we had a guy and that dude can fucking drive man yeah and i outdrove him on that shit <laughs> nice i was stunned man that's all right man yeah. i mean god like i could never figure it out now putt putt i'm a goddamn monster i'm a good putter well people that don't play golf tend to have a real baseball approach, so their swing looks very similar to you know, if they were at a batting cage. <laughs> and you can't do it that way, but it, and it feels goofy, but you got to do the whole, you have to draw it back, 
and you got to move all your weight back, and then you start pulling those hips forward right as you're bringing the head of the club through. Yeah. And for me, most of the time, that means it's going to go right or left. <laughs> but right. every once, every once in a while, that shit's like, whoa. Right? You, you hit the button right in the middle of the meter. Get that, it, and it looks like some shit you'd see on uh, on PGA sh- you know, tour on the weekend. That's all right. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Having said that, my fucking short game is terrible today. That's why usually like my co-host that I do on my uh, day job said, you know, that's usually where you save us, and I, I that wasn't there today. It didn't exist today. <laughs> my putting game, my short iron game, fucking long iron game and drives, though, perfect, you know, for the most part. Yeah. I mean, I struggled on a few. I topped a few and made them, you know, get them out there. It's like, oh, I don't even think I hit the red tee boxes, which by tradition means you're supposed to run out there and pull your pants down, dunce your pants around a circle. <laughs> That's like some old ancient shit. Nowadays, you go, well, I guess, guess I'll buy everybody a shot. But you know. ah. Damn, that's a uh, golf culture's certainly changed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember the first time I brought that up with a real with a non-golfer. He's like, wow, I didn't know there's some weird sexual assault stuff to this game. I'm like, no, 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 that's it's not. It's all by choice. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you're dropping your if you're dropping trowel, you know, you're dancing around a circle. Well, that's that's on you, pal. Unless you're crying while you're doing it. Then you no. might be able to blame someone else. Yeah, the uh, it, it, was, it was a good time, though. But it was all in conjunction with this thing they're doing with the university and their homecoming and all this other shit. They didn't do one last year because of the pandemic. So, yeah. it's, it's another one of those milestones. Like, well, fuck, it feels like a little bit like we're back to normal, even though we're not. And that's all right. I mean, leap, you know, fucking baby steps towards that shit. Tool announced uh, their, their return concert. I don't know if you saw that. They're, uh, yeah, I'd even looked. I thought, man, let's see if there's anything we could actually possibly work in. Apparently, those cats don't like working weekends any more than anybody the rest of us do. Yeah. I saw San Antonio on there, but I didn't dig into that time in January. It was like, when a, it, it was like a Monday. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just glad to see, because I was really concerned maybe Maynard, you know, might still be dealing with COVID. Man, those dudes posted that schedule. It's like, oh, fuck, they're not just coming back. They're yeah. coming back with a vengeance. They're going back to work. Yep. And, it, it, again, it, it's good to see. It'll be even better to hear for those that get to go. We already went. But, uh, I, yeah, like, I was really worried that man would be like, bro, this, this is my singing style is not easy. Yeah. Eating live, it's even more difficult because you got to fucking pull some shit back so you can do that shit every other day. Right. So it's, Wait, that's which, good to hear. And you'll notice that on their tour schedule, too, is that – it's pretty rare they do back-to-back days, and if they do, man, they got the day before the first one off, and they take the next day after the second one off. Too. Yeah. But uh, apparently their ticket sales went over so fucking huge in the U.K., they added a second London date So Damn. today, you know. Good. Which Good. I couldn't imagine a Tool concert in London. How so? And fucking people, people in the U.K. tend to be different. And uh, let, let me go ahead and... Let me uh, let me make a culpatory statement here. Uh, Beware not, our UK not, fan base. I am not talking about Northern Ireland. I'm not talking about Scotland, and I'm not talking about Wales. <laughs> in other words, fucking people in England are a little goddamn crazy when they uh, hit hit their uh, hit their concert tours. Yeah, is that? But is that like just a ravenous fan base or just yeah. a bunch of retards? It's because I, I I well they live under gray skies fucking all the time. They get like eight days of sunshine. Uh, right? Depression. Yeah, that'll do a lot. But and then um, <clears throat> not that we're really jumping right in. Well, we're all over the map anyway lately. Yeah. Um, Moon Sorrow apparently canceled everything. I read that. I don't know what's going on. And they they certainly didn't fucking really shed any light on it. But they just basically said <coughs> due to an immediate um, like a health thing. Right. Yeah. Immediate health situation. Uh, we are uh, no longer going to be doing anything. Hopefully we can be back by summer of 2022. Damn, man, that uh, it sounds COVID related. Well, Finland blows for COVID. Yeah, but that's fucking. I mean, if that was the case, to be like, oh man, that's some bad shit. Well, we're gonna have to cancel some shit for the next few months. Not like, yeah, we'll see you assholes like in eight or nine months. That's yeah. uh, seems like a hell of a run. And really, not to say that Moon Sara was that active with info or music for that matter before this. Yeah, pretty sparse. They. <sighs> And it's a different, weird culture. I don't know. I don't know how up on some of the Moon Sorrow stuff is, but because the biggest problem that they always have in Europe, and it's only Europe, um, is the uh, the whole white supremacist, fascist fucking stuff, right? Yeah. 
And Moonsaro apparently have no problems being friends with some of those people. And people get really angry about it. It's like, well, why don't you go ahead and call them out on it? It's like, why would we call out our friends? <laughs> you know? Is that the right response? No. But you got to understand the culture, too. Yeah. And you also have to understand that's not any that's not any of the rest of the band. That's fucking all Henry Cervalli. Yeah. Because he tends to... Uh, he, he he's dismissive of, of stuff. Do I think that Henry Cervalli's fascist or fucking uh, any kind of like along with the white supremacist stuff in any way, shape, or form? I don't think so. I just think that in that particular circle, he's aware of people, and maybe that is their bag, and he doesn't want to necessarily call anybody out on it because he's just there to fucking play music. Yeah. Is yeah. that does that now? I understand like some people say, hey, but that's empowering those people to. You know, you know what? I think that the guy looks at him and goes, ah, fuck it. It ain't my business. Yeah, Henry Sorvalli's not going to take over the world. I mean, shit. And so that's kind of the thing. And, yeah, uh, Metal Sucks had put out a big article on it here a few months ago about that, and about how disappointed they were and everything. It's like, make sure you, you understand cultural norms and normative behavior within those cultures. I'm not, I'm not saying that Henry Sorvalli's right. I'm not saying he's wrong or any of that shit. I just think that that dude, he views anybody trying to get information that's not strictly about the music of Fentrell or Moon Sorrow. Yeah. I think he's like a like fucking very like, eh, suck a dick, you know? <laughs> As, well, that's all right. I mean, shit. Just like. Yeah, but we live in a world where people are like, yeah, but you see this going on. You know, why would you why would you play the same festival with this band when those guys are all fascists? And it's like. Because we're fucking, we're not those guys. What what are, what are you supposed to do? Are you yeah. supposed to just say, that's it, we're going to fold the band because I don't want to call them out, but yet it's none of our business, so I guess we're just not going to play anymore. Yeah, it's, man, bands don't answer to fucking anybody but themselves. And you would have to say, by having a fuck off approach, isn't that the most metal approach of all? Yeah, at the bare minimum, it's punk as fuck. Yeah, I mean, Dave Mustaine has his own issues with the same kind of shit. Oh, yeah, that dude has no problem just going and fucking saying his opinion on stage in front of a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, it's... I, I, look, if you're looking to change the world, don't try to do it through metal. Yeah, I wouldn't even try to do it through music. <laughs> I wouldn't even try to do it, because fucking, first of all, you'd have to you'd have to try to figure out what the fuck's wrong with it and figure out how to fix it and then move forward with that. I nah, that's, And then if it fucking breaks again, you're going to have to go back and fix it again. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a mess, because we live in a society now, a global society, where people are like, no, no, you, you see it wrong, you should fix it immediately. But how? By how? You know, you see somebody else, you can, well, you can call them out, I guess. Well, then there's a rift, and you'll never want to play a festival with that band again. Okay. I, 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 I kind of get it. You know, then people are like, well, you ought to call them out. And Henry's like, why? Y'all, apparently, y'all already did. <laughs> it's, so yeah. It's why, like, don't fucking get me involved in your battles. So Shit. It's, so it sounds shitty, and it sounds like you're empowering people that shouldn't be empowered. But, God damn it, at the end of the day, if it isn't something that is in your locus of control, fucking let it go, man. Yeah, fucking, you know, I mean, learn to sure. adapt. Do, do what everybody else does. Get on social media and express your recreational outrage so you can look woke. You can look like you're on top of things, Ugh. demanding others to change their opinions to match those of your own. Or, or just fucking go ahead and go through life and try to fucking better yourself. Isn't that the fucking key? Isn't that some shit that Bruce Lee was laying down way back when? Right up there with B. Water, my friend. <laughs> kind of the confused. same thing. Not to be confused with a B. Arthur. Right yeah, now. no. Yeah. Well, you know, I want to be in Arthur. <laughs> uh, fuck, it's a Mead Metal and MMA podcast. We're, uh, uh, you know, first of all, we'd, uh, we'd said we were going to do a show last week. <laughs> because uh, Brett was in town, our, uh, our third uh, we uh, we didn't do a show last. We week. didn't. We no. uh, it was last week is devoid of podcasts. We got uh, we got we got we got fucked up for several days in a row. Well, you know when the coal company is together, yeah, and you got business to talk about, you make sure you get all the business talked about. Not to mention because all of us took fucking vacation over the same period for a staycation, which is pretty badass, by the way. Yeah, and we uh, we we got deep in the cups Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then Brett and I still got a little deep in the cup Sunday. Yeah, I had to tap out. Yeah. I had to go to work on Monday. I, I, <laughs> fucking, I don't blame you. God. And man. honestly, 
<laughs> and the great thing is Sunday. So like I'm, <coughs> I'm hanging out in my room. Sunday night, about to shut it down and get ready to fucking go to bed. Start a, week, a work week. I feel like I have like something in my eyes. So I start fucking rubbing it. And uh, feel, I, feel, I feel like I've rubbed it to completion. And I go to the bathroom to get my last labors of the night done. And I just have, I, I, I'm fucking my entire eyes red. Yeah. Just blood ass red. Where the white's supposed to be, it's red. Yeah. Pretty metal. It, it was pretty metal. Uh, it's metal if you expect it. If you like, I've I, I thought I was like, oh, so this is this is the first part of the stroke, right? The other part's coming, right? So I still sit down on the toilet to get work done, and I'm just panicking, like, oh god, what is this? Oh god! So I run back to my room, Jay. I was like, okay, just a bunch of blood vessel. It might mean this shit, but I know it's not half of that shit. I just fucking rub my eye too hard. And uh, so Monday, it looked fucking terrible. That's also, I mean, there's a good possibility it's also an extension of our uh, overactivity of. Uh, I I would attribute uh, that. That's why I was like, I think it's just from fucking going a little too hard. Yeah, giving the body the res- the respite it needs. Well, let's face facts. What we're accustomed to is a uh, pretty uh, pretty heavy throwing down to the liquor on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Not not this fucking Tuesday through Sunday shit. It it was it it was a new one. I mean, thought that was, yeah, that was a lot. It was a lot. God damn, it was worth it. Except for the eye thing. Well, yeah, it was it was a good fucking time. But man, it's uh, I I would I would like to say actually, then come Monday, then I felt a lot better because like man, at least now I'm not going to drink. Yeah, I, I was then I was thinking I've got too many beers in this house. Because each one of us every day is like buying 12 packs and shit. Next thing I know, there are like 50 fucking tall boys in this house, and Brett's getting ready to go home. And I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with all these beers around here? I don't want them to go bad. <laughs> and they didn't. <laughs> they and were enjoyed. And let's just say I'm taking it, take, take it at the hoop a little hard in 2021 anyway. But Hey, burning it out. Better burn out and fade away. I think the Kurgan said that. I think the Kurgan said that. Yeah. yeah you, can, uh, you can, I know you can. And I'm pretty sure he said that in a church. So I think I yeah. think it's probably accurate, right? And they started punching the air aggressively. Right before you uh, like started snuffing out all the candles. <laughs> the Kurgan to us, Mr. Krabs to people younger than us. That is a little funny. I it, it it every time you bring that up, I always think, God, that's a fucking crazy thing. And that dude's voice and characters on SpongeBob and the Kurgan. <laughs> yeah, he's uh he's run the whole gamut. I mean shit. Pet Cemetery 2, he was in. He was the dad that fucking got killed and then brought back, and he just turned into a fucking dick. <laughs> but you know, in the Highlander, though, you know, at least in the modern times, then when he has his hair all slicked back and shit like that, he looks like a member of Sha Na Na, right? Looks like Bowser on a fucking terrible day. <laughs> especially with the darkened eye shit around it, you know, yeah. make it look recessed. Yeah, he look that he's a scary motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. I I forget I don't even know what his fucking nationality is, but I'm sure it's somewhere deep in Europe. I don't know. People in Scotland have a real problem with that movie cuz they had a Frenchman fucking play a Scotsman. They had a Scotsman play a fucking Spaniard. Uh it was like come on, come on people. What's going on with this? <laughs> yeah. yeah the- Christopher Lambert is the probably the wor- I mean, I I appreciate the work he did in that role. But he, that was the wrong casting. I agree. I, I agree. I mean, even, but now even looking back, I can't fucking imagine it being anybody else. Yeah. They could have, the guy they got to, in the TV series to do, uh, to be fucking Duncan McLeod, he would have been a better choice than Lambert for Connor. It's it's fine. I'm I just I just don't think a Frenchman's going to be able to handle the weird intricacies you, of being a Scotsman. You heard his accent. Oh, yeah. It was terrible. Well, that's the one thing. It's like he's either French or he's got a weird speech impediment. I think it's a combination. He he has a weird voice. Already like real low and real fucking monotony. Yeah. It's, yeah. His phrasing is definitely a little different, right? Yeah. And and now that he's older, he's fucking hard to understand. Oh, I'm sure. I man, I, I legit haven't. Even, well, 
I mean, I, there, there, there might be some surprises out there, some things in the hedges I hadn't paid attention to, but I don't think I've seen that guy in anything since Highlander. No. The, well, he's uh, – I, 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 I kind of enjoyed his work in the 90s. He did a movie called Fortress. That was pretty good. Uh, it's got Red from fucking that 70s show in it as the bad guy. Gotcha. Does he sound like a Frenchman? Uh, I, yeah, cause actually, because I, I wonder if he doesn't sound like he's supposed to sound. He's if he's si- cast differently, I hate to say it. He sounds exactly the same in every movie he's in. No shit, that's yeah. bizarre to me. Uh, he's in a movie with uh, fucking Mario Van Peebles that isn't Highlander three, and he sounds the same. See the Mortal uh, Kombat? He's fucking Raiden. Sounds ex- it sounds just like D- Connor McCloud. Hmm. Because uh, Highlander two was the uh, the quickening, right? The one in the future. That was the first movie in my life I uh, ever walked out of. And it was about 20 minutes in. This is at a base theater. I think I paid five bucks, so I wasn't exactly all that out. You know, yeah, but money. still shit. That's, that's $5 in time you're out. And if you felt offended enough to GTFO. And I just thought, man, uh, the, the first one was a fucking perfect movie. They, they, they kind of set, set up all the characters, kind of ran through the whole storyline. You got a good grasp of it. They had the big fucking uh, big pivotal encounter at the end. Yeah. And it's a happy ending. And it was underst- a complete movie. And it was understood that, hey, this motherfucker's prize is he's going to be able to die a natural death now. And then uh, and it's like, oh, well, hold on, though. <laughs> we have I, these aliens from space. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> done. So, I, I mean, that's it, it really it spoiled the well for anything Highlander related after that. Because you're talking about the TV show. I'm not 100 percent sure I've ever seen an episode. Yeah. Uh, and, and honestly, it, the TV show doesn't hold up as great as I recall, but for what it was, I mean, shit, that thing ran for like six, seven seasons. It was fairly, I'd say it was better than the last two movies that came out before it. That wouldn't be a big stretch, but some things don't hold up well to time. Um, especially spinoff TV series off of movies. Case uh-huh. in point, you remember the movie Lonesome Dove, right? Yeah. Mini series and shit. Well, they did a TV spinoff of that where they wanted to focus on the kid, which the kid was killed off, right? I mean, that's what Larry McMurtry wanted. Because all these people are like, oh, Nuke, such a great character. And he's, you know, Streets of Laredo. Larry McMurtry jumps right on his typewriter. I'm like, well, fuck that kid. I'm going to kill him. And like, he, like, kills him in the opening three pages or something. like the George R. R. Martin of their time. Yeah, he's like, I, I fuck that guy. He's not, he's not the big guy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so they put out a, a, a TV series, and it, I don't it was uh, Lonesome Dove something to something years. I don't fucking remember exactly, yeah. but um, it had, God damn it, Scott fucking something. This Canadian actor. Uh, but so they make him all hard, but he's a grown up newt, you know, and he, uh, so he's supposed to be the, the, I guess, the protagonist. And then the antagonist is a guy. Remember the, uh, the head gay dude on. Um, it's that one with a chick and uh, that fucking annoying bitch and, and her roommate's gay. And they, um, Three's Company? No, 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 no. 90s. Uh, no, actually 2000s. Take that back. And like uh, the co-worker Karen and the gay dude Jack. I mean, uh, fuck me. What is it? What is it? Clearly, well, clearly, I mean, that that's, you pass the test because you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, that's... Uh... That's one over my head. Man, yeah, well, when I say it, though, you'll fucking recognize it. It's, um, and I can't remember that bitch's name either. Will and Grace? Will and Grace. Hey! Hey, look at that. All right! So, yeah, so the, uh, so the main dude in Will and Grace, uh, he, he played the bad guy in that Lonesome Dove fucking show. Got this big old beard, though, you know, but he's like a southern gentleman, you know, kind of thing. And yeah. Yeah, so to see him in Will and Grace is like, what the hell is this? But, the uh, fuck? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but the same thing, though. That one did not hold up well. It, it absolutely... The TV show tried really, really hard. And you have these near encounters between your protagonist and antagonist, but never really happened. You know, it, and I don't know. Is that... I, I guess that's the one thing. You always want that tension to build, tension to build, tension to build. I'm not a fucking screenwriter, but but it's like, man, at some point you got to fucking give give people a payoff. Yeah, and, you got to get something back. They never did. They never did. Really? They yeah. just kept fucking pouring on and be like, we're done. I think they had two seasons, I want to say, and then that was it. And that's and it went away, and they so they never did have that big face off. Oh shit! It kind of ended like Deadwood did. Only that one was actually heartbreaking. 
my cat just took a shit in the other room and it's drifting into here. <laughs> what do you feed old beef boy Dilly? The same. The same <laughs> thing every day. Everybody always wants fucked us when we're trying to work. Jesus. Trying to work. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's been a... A real bastard of a day today. But I was over jamming while it goes. I usually like to do on Fridays. I like to get in a solid hour of you know just uh, jamming a lot of leads and things like that. Yep. And and figuring out different 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 scaling operations and and Aeolian e- um, modes and and fun shit like that. Sounds fancy. And all of a sudden, then my amp starts getting a little quieter. So I started cranking up a little bit. I'm like, man, this, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Before I know it, I've got everything kind of maxed out, and I can barely hear it. And this, that Marshall, I can wake people up down the road. Yeah, that thing doesn't, <laughs> doesn't need to be bumped too much. To Next thing I know, that fucking thing is it's silent. I, I can't get a sound out. I mean, I can get a bunch of static. I, I think I fuck something up. I don't know. God. I can't imagine what I did because it's not like I blew it out or anything. I yeah. Mean, I, I don't play that fucking loud. Right. Fuck, man. I, God damn it. Fun, fun, fun times, fun times. It's, it's always fucking something. You know, Nothing's the, ever fucking simple, man. And the fun shit is, and one of the things I was complaining about, I had to go out and buy a TV since our last podcast. I had to go out and buy a new TV because the other one was just, it had three dead spots in it, well, near dead spots that it was just driving me crazy. And I, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to get something new. If you, if you, if you get about $100 a year into a TV, well, I got about the four years out I, I should have on that Vizio, which I'll never own another one. But Yeah. Um, yeah, I got, I got about four solid years for a $400 TV. All right, great. When I bought a Samsung, it's great, but the problem is it's too smart, and it, I, it doesn't allow me to control it the same way that I did the Vizio, mainly because it's its own proprietary shit. Yeah. So if I'm trying to bump volume or whatever, I have to have the remote handy. You have to have the remote in order to make anything work. Which is funny because there are some that's like, shit, that doesn't even come with a remote. Your ass better have a cell phone, buddy. Yeah, this, this one, I mean, I can control a little bit of volume with my phone, but it's very minimal. It's minimal. Yeah, when you're using the fucking proper remote, you can bump that thing to ball fucking rattling levels. But not as loud as the last one, I would say. Yeah, yeah, true. But I don't know. It's, it, it's uh, The world goes to shit, and I'll just um, I'll just keep drinking. That's at least one constant that will never be affected, you know, the drinking. Yeah. And the joy well, that comes with drinking. I'd like to think there's a lot of joy, but I don't know. And then that's the other thing. I think I'd mention, I, I wasn't really wanting to get fucking personal on a, on a show. And I mentioned, I think, last episode that I've got kind of a, I've had a diagnosis. And I'm out playing golf today, and I am fucking winded. Yeah. By like, by like the 11th, 12th hole. I mean, at the last... Last six, seven holes were just a, it was torture. Damn, man. Oh, well, this this is fun. <laughs> so, I mean, damn, that's. Yeah. So, I don't know. And then on top of that, and I'm supposed to be transmitting my number, my uh, step counter that I have and shit like that. I'm not going to submit it because I went about three times over what they expect of me on a daily basis. I don't want them. I don't want them to f- look at that and go, whoa, 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 whoa fucking you know, just, slow your roll. You don't want them getting the wrong idea or that you're, you're above and beyond in this shit. Or, or worse, I don't want them going, hey, that's what we like to see. You do that again. Uh, uh, nope, don't want to. Oh, sorry, bitches. Don't hey. want to. What are you doing? Well, goddamn, should we get to LJ? Let's go, uh, yeah, because uh, let's go ahead and check in. We haven't... Uh, yeah, we haven't checked in with LJ in a couple weeks. I was like, no, what's going down? When we check in with Let's Lowdown, check. what's going on in metal for this week? We're back with another thrilling segment of the metal portion of the Mead Metal and MMA podcast. I'm your cheerful host, LJ, and I'm here to get you into some fucking metal. So, let's start this list off the right way, shall we? First on this list is Full of Hell. The album is called Garden of Burning Apparitions. Now, if the title doesn't give away that this is a really extreme album. I don't know what does. It's extremely heavy, it's very deep, and it's something that sounds a little melodic, but it's very dark. So enter at your own peril, unless you're a complete pussy like me. So there you go. Next up is Asking Alexandra with See What's on the Inside. I gotta be honest, 
I have never really been an Asking Alexandria fan. First time I saw them, I was kind of drunk at a concert to go see Five Finger Death Punch. And yeah, I actually fell asleep during Asking Alexandria set. Whether it's a coincidence or not, it just, I don't know. But when I heard them, I just heard All That Remains, Five Finger Death Punch, Breaking Benjamin. I heard all these other bands kind of mishmash together and it sounded chaotically befuddling to me so i was never really a fan but i gotta say i think they actually got their shit together on this album good job guys maybe i'll see you with your next show and not fall asleep i've actually seen them twice my nephew has seen them three times but they've opened for three bands he's wanted to see moving on four stroke baron the album is called classics i don't know much about classics on this album these actually sound like b-sides but uh they're really weird and Heavy and dark and take a very, very long time to go anywhere. And it's not my cup of tea, but if that's yours, then absolutely fund these guys' careers. Because they'll need it. Next on this list is a band called Bummer. And the name of the album is called Dead Horse. (laughs) It could be the first time a band added themselves in their name for me. Actually, I gotta say, in all honesty... I've never heard a band like this in my life. It's actually kind of cool. I don't know how to describe the music other than to say it does not fucking take itself seriously. But it also doesn't fuck around. Um, Especially with the song title. Uh, Let me look this up real quick so I don't get it wrong. The song that I listened to first when I looked up the band name was I Want to Punch Bruce Springsteen in the Dick. Yeah, that's the name of a song. Other song names are E1M1, which sounds like the name of the first level from Doom. I gotta check that out if that's what it is. And something called Rareware, Kid Spock, Magic Cruel Bus. Yeah, you guys have to check it out just to see what the hell they're about. Because I don't get it, but I guess I like it. I don't know. So yeah, fun their career as well. Finally on this list, we conclude with KK's Priest with the album Sermons of the Sinner. I actually loved it. It sounds kind of like if Judas Priest was formed in the metalcore era. It's uh, K.K. Downing tearing shit up and burying everyone in an avalanche of riffs, man. It's fucking amazing. (laughs) And they sound just like like Painkiller Priest. Painkiller Era Priest. So uh, if that's your bag, then this is it. So go ahead and check them out. I really enjoyed listening to it, honestly. And watching the music video for one of their songs... I uh, can't remember which song it was. They're all actually pretty fucking good. But watching the music video actually kind of took me back to watching old uh, 80s videos. It was just so fucking rad to see him with a V guitar just shredding his heart out, you know. So that's all I've got for this list. I'm sorry if it's a little bit short, guys. It just didn't seem to be a lot of stuff that caught my ear. Hopefully this catches ear here, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. See ya. Rock the fuck on. Hey, hey. Thank you, LJ. Um, man, dude brings more energy. It makes me always feel like I'm mailing it in. Goddamn. Wakes us up. Although I have some really good news, and that is uh, during LJ's segment, I was pissed off enough I went over and checked on my Marshall. That fucking thing's working again. I've got a funny feeling. That it's, either, it's one of two things. There's either a connection that's an issue, and it could very well be because Marshall still goes old school off of the actual speaker itself it um, actually still has full on i mean an actual way for you to plug right uh, not even actual it it has an immediate plug-in adapter direct from speaker to the back of the amp oh okay and that's and uh, i think i think the purpose of that is so you can unplug that hook it into a much bigger fucking like a stack you know whatever it's either that or else our good old New Mexico dust has gotten in there and gotten on um, really maybe into the power section. And I just need to blow that shit out and clean it out of there because it might have it devices nowadays. If they start to sense that they're overheating, they will kind of shut you the fuck yeah. down. And we should also say that when we say New Mexico dirt, we mean fucking sand. It's bad. Yeah. So. Uh, so anyway, that's it's it's not it's not as horrible as I was afraid it was going to be. Hey, the day is saved. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Hey, and I'm starting to feel a little drunk. So again, so the, for the second Fuck, time man. today, for the second time today. Thank you, LJ. Uh, what do you got going on for metal this week? Well, I mean, shit, man. 
I mean, LJ kind of covers it really well. Yeah. You know, I mean, and we already talked about Mastodon. Um, well, uh, actually, Can- you know, Cantrell's release is coming out here a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, yeah. Yeah. That, I, I think his album comes out, and then the next week Mastodon's comes out. Right. So it's not bad back to backer. Jerry Cantrell will always get my ear anytime he puts out anything. Well, it's because he's a fucking genius. Yes. Yeah. He, he, he's a wizard among us. Yeah. We are lucky to have him. And, man, and he's dropped, what, two off of that new record already? Yeah, A Tone and Brighton, which I think is like probably the beginning and the end of that album. I think you're probably right, just like fucking Deftones did it, right? Yeah. But, totally um, all right with that. But both tracks, very different in their own right and in, in a very good way. Yeah, absolutely. That At first, uh, that Bri- the song Brighton kind of had to grow on me for a second. Because while it is exactly what Jerry Cantrell does, it's a little bit more of a different approach. I was expecting something a little more it, musically, like a little more darker. And it's Kinda really like not Foggy Depot. <laughs> little, a little more bright, but, but, you know, pun intended for that. But man, the lyrics are always where the dark is. Yeah. That man is a hell of a lyricist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing, too, about those two tracks that we have heard, it, it, it's less like Boggy Depot and more like Alice in Chains' uh, Black Gifts Way to Blue. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's actually a really great comparison. Ugh, all see. fun things there. Uh, what else do we have going on metal wise? Because man, again, we we kind of talked a whole bunch of the kind of the shit making kind of the pulse right yeah. now. Uh, Ozzy's were already got another album coming out. <laughs> well, of course, next fucking not? year because he just put out that other one last year. Well, he's still alive. If he's on this side of the dirt, why not to keep working, huh? Well, you know that's probably what's keeping him on this side of the dirt too. And it's not like his wife's pulling down a paycheck right now, right? Uh, it's gonna have a uh, shit. <laughs> ooh, 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 whoops. Fuck that bitch. Uh, it's going to have Tony Iommi on it. Fucking Zach Wilde, Eric Clapton, and Jeff Beck. I'm all right with all of those except Clapton, because that guy can go fuck himself now. I, now that his whole fucking approach to vaccines is like, fuck you. You're a musician. You're not a goddamn virologist. Would you shut Stay your goddamn your fucking mouth? Yeah. People, yeah. People are actually dumb enough to listen to you, dude. Right. And, it's like, and you have an audience. You're, and you, a very old audience, I would add. Stop it. You aren't yeah. helping anybody out. Absolutely. A uh, ghost Ben, we haven't talked about in a while. Yeah, it's because I'm not a fan, man. Me neither. I try. I try I, every time. I bring. I'm. I now. I talk more about him now, just because it's such a fascinating thing that this band has done. Because it went from being a band, like a proper band, right, to being the goddamn what's his name Topher I was about to say Topher Grace Topher Grace, Grace? Topher Grace. <laughs> I can't even remember his fucking name that's how much I care about him but it's his show he was getting sued and he's basically like this is my band it's not a band this like, is my band just like the dude from Ogalock right yeah only instead of that band dying this one just goes on to be the ghost show they put out a new song called Hunter's Moon and the only reason I bring it up is because it's on the soundtrack for the upcoming Halloween Kills movie oh, the movie okay. I'm fucked the movie I am stoked for. The soundtrack that John Carpenter has a hand in, I am stoked for. This song can go fuck itself. Yeah. You, we always talk about, like, innovation. Fucking, like, man, what, what, what is this band going to do this fucking, not like a total change up of their sound, but some overall improvement or just making better shit even better. This sounds exactly the same as Ghost. Of course. I don't get it anymore. I don't. I don't understand the. Uh, well, we the got allure. a. And we have a mutual friend and a guy that's been on this podcast before. That's a fan of Ghost, but ah, it's like sorry, Samuel. I mean, I, um, I get it. Yeah, fucking, you know, rock what you want to rock. But man, Ghost is fucking boring. Got any Machine Gun Kelly news? <laughs> Machine Gun Kelly versus the Metal World. Man, he, uh, he, he he's been getting wrong. he's been fucking getting the fuck booed everywhere he goes. Social media, he's getting lambasted, and mainly just because he said basically Corey Taylor's like you're too old to be wearing a mask or 50 whatever. Fifty year old wearing. I'm, I'm glad I'm not a fifty year old having to wear a mask to do my music. Which, why would you throw shade like that? Because I was like, did Corey Taylor say something? No. no, no, he did not. No, they were just fucking playing the same time he was. I was like, well, they probably couldn't hear your shitty music over that music. I mean, um, the only thing about Machine Gun Kelly I'm envious of are the ladies he's banging, and that's about it. That's yeah. about where that ends. 
Megan Fox is a little bit of a tough pill for me. Well, she is now. It's like, oh, she's fucking him. Ooh, hey, all yeah. right. It's like, what the fuck does she, who does she owe money to? Damn. She was all right in that fucking first Transformers movie. Yeah. But I've been checked out on her ever since. That yeah. Jennifer's body, she was all right in. But, man, once you, once you hit that famous fucking top, that ceiling, all you're going to do now is just get weird and fuck strange little blonde children. Yeah. But uh, I I really enjoy I fucking Corey Taylor. I guess, I guess what it all revolved around was Corey Taylor was going to guest vocal on one of that dude's songs and uh, put in a, f- a rough draft of the work. And uh, Machine Gun Kelly was like, yeah, we, we want to do this song, you know, that's going to be on the radio and it's for the soldiers, you know. And Corey Taylor's like, you know what? I don't want anything to do with this. Corey Taylor's like, man, I've been in the weird position of being in support of the war, but against the troops. I I think I (laughs) think that's a tough one to wrap your brain around, too. But it's uh, like he once he knew that basically this was just going to be a song that he wanted to make that would be played on the radio and he'd make money. Corey Taylor really need that. No. So he was like, thanks. No, thanks. Good luck. And I guess uh, old butt hurt Kelly boy calls him out on it. And then Cortell's like, here's the messages you sent me. And here's the message I sent you, motherfucker. We're done here. Sorry to hear that, Machine Cunt Kelly. So, uh, <clears throat> Stanky Machine right? Cunt. Machine Cunt? Machine Cunt Kelly, yeah. You want to take a little detour and talk about weed? <laughs> That's my nom de plum. So uh, you ended up um, kind of informing me of... Uh, of an interesting thing. Well, you're, you're, you're the one that's always giving me kind of an inside line of uh, interesting products that are out there because now that it is legal here in the state of New Mexico, eh, not, not legal for rec yet, uh, but it'll get there. But, uh, yeah. about, but about everybody, it's just like California was here a couple of years ago. Everybody in the state has a card. So, sure. So I knew what one to one was, and that's where you get CBD to THC. And one to one is, you know, if, so yeah, if it's uh, if a dosage is 20 milligrams of CBD, then it's 20 milligrams of THC. Generally, it's 10 to one. And that's the one I really, really like because it's, uh, you know, I think I think per dosage, it's like 30 milligrams of CBD to 10 milligrams uh, THC. Yeah. Uh, or, or a three, three. I'm sorry. 30, 30 and three. Um, tell me about this product you brought today. Well, sir, this is a one to one to one. You didn't think we could fit one more one in there. By yeah. God, we did. You didn't think three ways actually existed in this world, right? <laughs> oh, boy, how do you do that? Well, I mean, weed is all about the entourage effect. You know, we always used to think, man, what's the fucking point of eating an edible, smoking a bowl, taking a pill, using some topical cream? Because they're all great? <laughs> well, outside the fact it's all pure is amazing, but they all, they all work together. And cannabinoids do, too, from THC to CBD to cbg now that one's you got i don't know what the hell we're talking about now cbg now i'm gonna it's about to sound like i'm pulling all this right off the top of my head but no i'm fucking reading a website okay uh cbg is cannabigerol where cbd is cannabiterol i wish we had fucking krista here for this uh this one it's similar to cbd in the fact that it binds to both your cb1 and your cb2 receptors uh it is f- used to heighten, this is going to sound dirty as fuck, but it's really used to heighten fucking pleasure, pleasure and motivation. Okay. Uh, it strengthen- strengthens the function of ana- ana- anandamide. anandamide, neurotransmitter that plays a role in enhancing pleasure and motivation, regulating appetite and sleep, and alleviating pain. And it has no, of course, psychoactive effect. So the serving size, I see, is one milliliter. So that's very tiny. Full amount. dropper. But it's uh, it's 4.16 across the board of all three spectrums. Yeah. So it's not exactly something that's going to fuck you up. Oh, but, no, no. But it's absolutely something that will be tinctures, quite helpful. Yeah, right? tinctures really aren't meant to fuck up really anybody. If you're using tinctures to get fucked up, that's just because. <laughs> you, uh, you need to see somebody. Yeah, yeah, because there, there are cheaper, better ways to get off. Uh, but this is, yeah, this is a straight up and not to throw shade on my own products from uh, the people I work for, but that fucking tincture is twice the size and $10 cheaper. Damn. And it fucking has way more than everything in it than anything else we have. Yeah. I mean, because whenever you say like 
full spectrum, that's generally meant to assume CBD, THC. Well, well, hello, full, full, full spectrum. Yeah, and I mean, shit, there's even CBN. CBN's another that's, one. That's the one that will knock your ass out, though, right? Uh, CBN is the one that they have studied that fucking has a very good effect on sleep. Which I would be really, really kind of interested to look more deeply into that because, man, I just, I just don't sleep worth a shit. Yeah, and and uh, but the funny thing is, CBN is really just dead THC converts over to this. Yeah, and uh, like whenever shit, we found a couple nugs of weed here that had been lost to the sands of time, and they were brown, they were brown, they were stale, kind of gross. No, just on the nose. It's not like I ground the shit up and smoked it. I, old weed gets the, the proper treatment. But it's chock full of the CBN that you'll smoke it, it'll hurt, it'll suck. But the feeling you'll get is proper, which is why, thankfully, they have a way to get that CBN out with just you having to buy weed. Couldn't you extract it with alcohol? You can. You can. All right. Alcohol, um, any any type of fat, like MCT oil, is is great. That's really like the prime thing. This one, however... Its base is blue agave nectar. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Me, yeah. Uh, I, that, that's kind of why I picked it up because it's like we have one that's blue agave, one that's chocolate agave. So it's kind of cool. And I'm kind of curious to see if these are, especially adding that 250 of the CBN, how it uh, how it affects the overall effect of the one to one. Yeah. And you're talking about the entourage effect. And the one thing I would say, <clears throat> because if I if it's nothing but THC and I go to bed, yeah, I'll sleep, but not great. Not not I'm, I'll fall asleep right away, but man, I, I I'll be awake in a couple hours. You yeah. know, about the time that that begins to wear off. Whereas with CBD, if I'm doing the ten to one on that, man, that CBD will it, it, it's a magic carpet ride. It'll take me all the way through at least six hours. I'll get at least six. Yeah, which I can operate on six. I can't operate on four. Right. No, that's a big window right there. Man. Yeah, it is. It really Six is. Six hours, you get... It's like, I feel that's... I it's I would love a little more, but that's enough. All right. Four, it's like, shit, I need eight more. Let's uh, let's move along and talk about uh, MMA, uh, because there's an issue, and her name is Aspen Ladd. Oh, I was reading about that. Or I watched well, it. Well, because she had a failed weight cut in 2018. She had a really bad Uf- one in 2019. UFC 229, that one was, yeah. It, it, she had, like, back-to-back years, 2018 and 2019. Now, this is the first time since 2019, because she got dusted 16 seconds in from that terrible weight cut. Um, and actually, I take it back to 2019 when she, they actually waved off that fight. Well, guess what? 2019 is here again. Yeah, dude. It, it, it was the same thing. A shaky yeah. Aspen lad. Yeah, they bring out the screen, and she's up there, and they're like, raise your arms. And, man, and it looks like she's, like, cheering. No, she's just trying to physically fucking hold her as, arms up. As soon as those uh, arms go above her head, the blood flow, she just can't produce the blood flow to stand up. fucking awkward, man. Yeah, and then I saw where they were, like, putting a uh, towel below it because they were probably afraid this naked Aspen lad was going to fucking pass out. Splayed out in front of everybody. This is this is worrying because the next thing above is 145, and and we all know this is a division that technically doesn't exist outside the fact to have Nunes be a champ champ. Um, and 145, that is that might as well be ladies heavyweight. There is no way Aspen Ladd gets to 145 at least she'd be healthier lung or fucking kidneys would still work but at the end of the day this woman is risking her fucking life to make 135 i think you got you got to move to 145 either that or else man she needs to really really invest in one of these fucking professional nutritionists that really started helping out a lot of brazilians yeah. that were having weight cut issues and him brow comes to mind Find somebody, pay them money, make that weight cut. Actually, I take it back. One of Hinton Brown was uh, Jose Aldo. Find somebody that that's what they do. I, but man, I don't. I don't think she's ever going to be able to be successful at one thirty-five. Yeah, it's a. Uh, she's had a because then she had that one where the weight cut was still a little shaky, but she made it. Yeah, and then got dusted. Right. So there is not a lot of positive that's happened in this girl's life over the past three years outside of maybe one victory. 
yeah. And even then, even in victory, it's uh, it's not over. It, it, she's not setting the world on fire, you know. No, I, I mean she had the opportunity to, but man, it's just he had that many road bumps. Look at a uh, fucking uh, what's his face? Uh, the the Smisher that was supposed to fight Leon oh, Edwards. Oh, uh, Chimaev, yeah. yeah. Here's another thing where it's like, man, this guy had all the fire behind him, and now I could barely remember his name. Yeah, yeah, because he came out, so he was like, yeah, I'll fight every week, whatever, you know, some shit like that. Well, and then suddenly, when well, he got COVID, he's like, nope, that's it, I'm never going to fight again, and they had to kind of lure him back in, but that, he's supposed to fight here in the next couple of months. I think back in, uh, I think they're going to Abu Dhabi later this month, back to Fight Island, and I think you, you can probably look to see him there. I'm kind of interested to see what this guy looks like, because fuck it, this guy's all over the map. Yeah, and I mean, we have every time we have seen the Akon, it's been fucking brutal. So, but is that still going to be the case? Yeah. Now a lot of eyes on him. I don't know. I want to see him succeed. It's good to have a killer in any weight division. There's not a lot of killers these days. Right. He could be one. Uh, with in another weird thing, we actually have a, <laughs> a fight card just wrapped up. Bellator had a fight card. I guess it was going to be in uh, Europe. Uh, the only reason I bring it up is because it was uh, Michael Venom Page going against Douglas Lima again. The last fight ending where Lima leg kicked MVP and got him on the ground. And as he's come back out, Douglas Lima just clipped him while he was on his knees and fucking ragdolled him. Fucking boring ass main event that MVP won. Yay, Bellator. Give it to that guy. Let him, let the man who just wants to jump around. And if he can't flash knock you out, he's just going to make a boring fight. Sure. It, that seems, that seems to be his calling card, right? That's not a good one. Uh, let's see. We got Peter Yon. It was supposed to be going against Aljermaine Sterling, but... Aljermaine Sterling's ducking everybody, right? I guess so, man. It's a it's not a good look, is it? No. No, it's like, I finally got the championship. Fuck that. I'm never fighting again, you know, until they make me. Well, the, you know, but... And I hate it when they do it, but damn it, you know what? It makes the champions have to fucking act... Give somebody an interim. And Give now, somebody an interim and then say, that's it. If you can't fight this interim champ, you're not the champ. I, uh, we, used, we used to feel the exact opposite. I know. But, it, well, I'll admit it. I was wrong. Yeah. Because the same. once I started really understanding what the promotion is doing, it's like, oh, you guys are fucking making the champs. Otherwise, because you're going to get, well, Cain Velasquez. Let's use him for an example. That guy was a champ for shit like five years. Long time. And it, like his last two and a half years, it was like a two and a half year gap between fights. And that's about the time we saw the UFC start going, fuck that, we're going to start handing out interims to, yeah. to almost everybody. If you're a champ and you you can't make a fight, we're going to offer an interim fight. Yeah, Francis Ngannou won the belt six months later. Not ready to go. Yep. Got us an interim title fight coming sure. up. Sure. I'm all right with it because agreed. Again, it's like, Shit. It, it keeps the logs moving go. down the river is yeah. what it does. And th- it's it's tough these days, man, to keep any weight division fluid. Yeah. Especially at the top. Oh, yeah. No, Everybody absolutely. wants to sit out and wait for that big money check. I think that's right. All right. Well, we uh, what else we got going on? Let me uh, see what's going on in old Low Kick Town. No, we're Low Kick Town. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like somewhere in Brazil. Uh. Uh, the uh, John Jones situation. Oh, boy. Uh, this is... I watched a video that Chael Sonnen did. Chael Sonnen, his YouTube channel, when he's talking about MMA shit, he's probably one of the best to do it. And at the end of the day, because I guess after all this happened, John Jones put up an Instagram post that was him like lifting weights and it had all these positive quotes around it about how he's leaving alcohol in his past and sure this is going to be the start of something this bad thing's going to be the start of something amazing meanwhile this dude gets arrested two days before all this he was there for a ufc hall of fame induction ceremony and then goes straight back to the hotel and fucking goes, beats up his girlfriend goes to caesar's palace gets drunk till 5 a.m comes back and fucking allegedly fucks up his girl his fiance in front of their kid yeah and they the kids uh right wasn't it two i think so yeah Dude. and they went down to fucking get a room another room key fucking knows she got a fat lip terrified to go back shit i'd be too man that's one of the most fucking that's a terrifying dude man <laughs> i don't want to fuck with john jones especially shit 
If he treats men the way he treats ladies, we all have a lot of trouble. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just call it what it is. That can fuck up some people. And That's, much uh, much like Joe Rogan not being at commentary for these last two pay per views, I'm okay with John Joe's not being an active fighter in the UFC. I uh, I read I I, I'd read an article and it used to be blasphemy to say yeah, I don't think the UFC really needs Joe Rogan. It used to be, and I hey, I was one of them too. I was like, nah, 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 hold on, man, we've reached the point where the UFC is better without Rogan. Yeah. Did you ever think to yourself when we were watching, well, shit, I mean, we didn't watch pay-per-view live. We were getting work done. But uh, when we went back and watched it, did you miss, did you think, man, this Joe Rogan would have made this so much no. better? I didn't Paul, think of him at all. Paul Felder takes up more slack and provides a better commentary than fucking any, almost anybody hands Yeah. Him. And what was the last week, D.C. and Felder? D.C., Felder, and Anik. Yeah. That's... There, there's some strength in that one. Yeah. Now, I get it. Some people don't like DC. Now the guy's fucking retired. I'm good with it. I, I fucking bring him on. He's one of the better ones in the sport. Absolutely. And I realize a lot of people go, nah, man, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Fucking, it's a goddamn sight better than Dominic Cruz. Yeah. Dominic Cruz has got the personnel of a beanbag chair. Zero charisma. The only time this dude has, like, lost his mind was for uh, that fucking Corey Sanhagen knee, flying knee knockout of Frankie Edgar. Yeah. You just hear him go, that was perfect. Right. I've never heard him exude any type of emotion in my life. Yeah, usually so it's he's only usually he's only emotional if it's uh, ref, if somebody reffing his fights and they smell like liquor and cigarettes. <laughs> Fuck. I want, there's got to be T-shirts of that in the realm. If there were, I'd buy one. I also want to know what the fuck uh, Keith Peterson is hiding under that turtleneck. Only ref I know to wear a fucking turtleneck well, and long sleeves in July in Vegas. Shall we revisit the whole moon sorrow thing from earlier? <laughs> <laughs> and cancel culture on Keith P. Oh, man. Fuck it. I think we're good, huh? Let's get to them sweet, sweet picks. All right. Uh, what are you drinking tonight? I think I might uh, put a squirt of that one to one to one in my Budweiser. The uh, ugh, I don't know. I mean, that shit, that's, that's under the tongue shit right there. So that's a subtle <laughs> angle. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to stay on Budweiser all day because that's where I started breakfast, and that's uh, where I'm going to wrap up the night because i gotta got to get some Thai food going here. B-L-N-D. What about uh, – what else are we doing here? What are uh, you listening to? I mean, granted, the new Mastodon. Man, I've given that thing like eight listens, and same. I'm still ho-hum about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to let it bum me out for the what potentially could be the rest of that album, but – it is it is noticeably like I'm I didn't like this one as much. Hey man, this might have been you know it's uh, asking uh, Brent Hines it's like uh, hey so uh, what track off of this? Let's play. It. Let's go. Let's drop that one. Like that one. That's our most boring track. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and and you know like I feel bad because I know that they write sh- music about some really heavy shit. They they Emperor Sam was about fucking cancer. <laughs> I mean, that come effect, on. If, yeah, like half their fucking crew was going through it the big c and we're not even talking about uh about old fucking uh dance her way into the daytime show right uh, <laughs> ellen degeneres <laughs> she's the big c yeah but I, I think with it being a whole not a whole album about uh their former uh friend nick john but that being an influence it's going to be a heavy record it always it, is, but damn it, they make it sound melodic. But yeah. and I guess that's the other thing too, is because they have raised the bar so significantly. Now I hear a new release, but from them, I get really excited. I hear it and I go, "Well, I don't know how to say this, but yeah. it, it sounds like Mastodon," <laughs> which is still kind of a compliment in itself. It's like, man, expectation fucking high. This one one is, is great. Yeah. All right. What about uh, what about as far as fights go tomorrow? You got uh, any impressions there? Anything John jumps Walker up? and Tiago Santos main event tomorrow. <sighs> Two Brazilians. Yeah. Uh, One I, I, like, uh, I like Tiago. The only problem I have with Johnny Walker, uh, other than the fact that he uh, grabbed the name of a of a cheap American Scotch, <laughs> but uh, well, except for the blue label, that's legit. That's true. But very true. Um, he's uh, he's a little penisy. He's a little penisy. He gets a little cocky in there. He doesn't know how to do the worm. No, because he, he's a guy who fucking got sidelined for like six months with an injury because he fucking tried to do the worm after a fight, after a win, I, I, and fucked himself up. I did like how he celebrated after the fight after that. He just fucking went down into Zen mode, didn't even do nothing. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. But uh, uh, Tiago Santos will get in there and just throw. 
I mean, this is a guy that a lot of people thought beat John Jones. Yeah, well, and there's, I think there's some legitimacy to fucking making that claim. There are arguments, and if there's an argument, man, shit. They say where there's smoke, there's fire. Right? Uh, but I, I would like to see Tiago Santos get back on, in the realm there. Johnny Walker's fine, but. I think light heavy's better when that guy is in it. Yeah, Agreed. in the mix. But anyway, that's going to do it for us. We're going to be back, uh, I believe, probably two weeks. I don't see any big reason to probably jump in, you know, on a week to week basis for for the show. Uh, it is the that, holidays. Having said that, yeah, it is. It is, uh, it is October. Uh, so uh, people are getting excited about Halloween and that's 30 days away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, 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 come on, motherfuckers. Just relax. All, all right. right. We'll get there. We'll get there soon enough. You'll get all your sweet, sweet Christmas decorations everywhere here in 30 days. Right? All the slut costumes will be there soon enough. Uh, and uh, for you ladies, uh, French, French maid is uh, that's classic. That's right. Uh, that's yeah. what I'm going to be this year. Yeah, to the fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined it for everybody. See you guys in uh, yeah, two weeks. Let's call it two weeks. <laughs>